This video is all about the electrophilic halogenation of benzenes and related aromatic compounds through an electrophilic aromatic substitution mechanism. We've seen that benzene doesn't react with Br2, but if we add a Lewis acid catalyst to the reaction mixture, we can get benzene to react with Br2 in a substitution process, not an addition process. And Cl2 is similar. We can get benzene to react with Cl2 in the presence of a Lewis acid catalyst as well. So in a typical halogenation reaction, a, an elemental halogen, Br2, in the left-hand example, and Cl2 in the right-hand example, is combined with the aromatic and a Lewis acid catalyst. And two examples are shown on the slide, FeBr3, iron 3 bromide, and AlCl3, aluminum trichloride. And either of these can be used actually in either case. Now, what happens here overall in the reaction is a hydrogen linked to the aromatic ring is replaced with the halogen atom, either a Br or a Cl. And the key byproduct of the reaction is the hydrohalic acid, HBr in the left-hand case and HCl in the right-hand case. To begin exploring the mechanism of this reaction, we now need to understand how the active electrophile is generated in the course of the mechanism and what the structure of that active electrophile is. So let's do that now. It's going to begin with the reaction between X2 and the Lewis acid. Here I'm using AlCO3 as an example of the Lewis acid. X2 can act as a Lewis base. The halogen atoms have lone pairs. Those can coordinate to the highly electrophilic aluminum center. And from the perspective of the aluminum, this looks like association of a nucleophile to the trigonal planar aluminum center, what we would call an A sub N step. The resulting Lewis acid base adduct or Lewis acid base complex looks like this. If we draw a covalent bond between X and AL, well now we have positive formal charge on the X atom and negative formal charge on the aluminum atom. And this positive charge in the X atom in particular suggests that the neutral X atom is actually highly electrophilic. This pair of electrons really wants to be over here. And so electron flow like this shows us that the hanging X atom is quite electrophilic. This is the active electrophilic species in halogenation reactions, this AlX2Cl3 species. And it gets involved in the A sub E step. Now we're in the sort of canonical standard mechanism of electrophilic aromatic substitution. The aromatic ring via its pi electrons coordinates to that hanging X atom. And at the same time, the X plus is kicked off as a leaving group. It's a fantastic leaving group, that positive charge on a halogen atom. It's a halonium ion is one way to think about this. This establishes a new carbon X bond in the resulting arenium ion. And we could think about this as A sub E from the perspective of the benzene ring and SN2 at this halogen atom. That's why both step labels are listed here. We've generated the classic now arenium ion, right? Delocalized positive charge, non-aromatic, and X linked to a carbon that has a hydrogen that we're going to deprotonate in the next step. One base you can use to do the deprotonation is this AlCl3X anion that we generated as a byproduct of that first step, the leaving group, right? Now has negative charge within it, and this can act as an anion, particularly by the XAL bonding electrons. And that reestablishes aromaticity and gives us the products. Now we have the halogen substituted benzene, the halo benzene. We've generated HX as a byproduct, and at least hypothetically, we've regenerated our Lewis acid catalyst. So this is indeed a catalyst, although this can get together with HX and do a lot of funky things. So quite often we need to use a full equivalent of the AlCO3. Because this second step restores aromaticity, it's way, way, way downhill. And just as in the standard prototypical mechanism we've already seen, it's the first step that destroys aromaticity and is thus rate determining. It's this coordination of the pi electrons to X to establish the carbon X bond that's rate determining in this reaction. 